Welcome to the Irreplaceable Dental Assistant Podcast brought to you by Dane. Dental assisting made easy. This is a safe space to be mentored, empowered, energized, and equipped. Welcome to another episode of the Irreplaceable Dental Assistant. And do I have a treat for you today? My guest this day is Miss Janet Simpson. Hi, Janet. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me, Heather Don. Well, I know so much about you and your special skills, but could you take a few minutes to share with our listeners? Um, just give us some insight as to who Janet Simpson is and what she brings to the world. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Yeah, I am a registered dental assistant in San Diego, California. I became a dental assistant by being trained on the job. So I learned everything by uh, by the good graces of my coworkers and my the dentists that I've worked for. They've been so educational. They've helped me along to improve my skills along the way. But I've also had a deep sense of curiosity. And so I pursue knowledge and I would recommend that to everyone. Just keep pursuing, advancing your skills, become the best dental assistant you possibly can be. Um, I I started as an unlicensed dental assistant. I got my registered dental assistant's license in 1991, uh, probably before you were born. (laughs) Um, I worked in general and pediatric dental offices. And then at one point, uh, I began teaching dental radiography. And that just became my niche. I knew that I had found the place where I belonged in dentistry. And so I've been teaching in some capacity or the other um, all these years. I, I, um, I worked at the community college level. And right now I work, uh, my day job is uh, I work at a, a dental clinic in an impoverished neighborhood in San Diego and we I, I get to teach dental assistants there at that uh, clinic and we also I get to use my dental assisting skills to bring comfort and healing to people and it's a joy to me to be a dental assistant I love it we have people that walk in whether they're two years old or whether they're in their 80s uh, people with dental anxieties And we dental assistants, we have the joy and the task of being able to comfort and have these people accept this much needed treatment. And we can do a great job of that or we can do a crummy job of that. And uh, of course, you've seen it all. Heather Dawn, you know, good assistants can be irreplaceable, like you said. And, And then there are some assistants who should be encouraged to grow. And I think we should all be encouraged to grow no matter where we are. So I guess that's a snapshot of me. I, one other thing I would say is that I own my own company. I, I am the owner of Dental Fundamentals Continuing Education. And I love to help because I started as an unlicensed assistant. I love to help dental assistants who really want to learn more. So I have courses on my website about how to take great dental x-rays and how to improve your infection control skills. And then I have another course that's more relevant to California that is um, the Dental Practice Act. So that's me in a nutshell. Well, Janet, you are certainly on the grow. And what I appreciate that you shared is that you started out learning on the job. And even though we have programs that certified dental assistants, quite a few dental assistants start out learning on the job. And our course, Dame Dental Assisting Made Easy, really Mm. speaks to those persons who are training on the job. And we supplement that training by providing 
on-demand learning that you can pick up in the evenings or whenever it's convenient for you. So you're always, as you say, Janet, on the grow. So no wonder we're in sync. There's so many things that we view in a similar, through a, a similar lens. So that's awesome. And yes, it's also, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's also good to hear your mindset about caring because at the end of the day while we have to have skills that make us proficient it's really the soft skills that keep people comfortable that keep our teammates assured that we're here with them that gives the dentist the confidence that he can rely on you as a dental assistant to be his extension so yes. thanks for sharing those words um now i know that you have a special love for dental radiology and you have courses that help to booster and reassure um, dental assistants about skills to take proper x-rays but we also know that beyond the skills we have different personalities, different mm -hmm. mouths that you have different things with. So could you share with us some of your um, tips that you may have in your toolbox that you use when you're um, approaching a patient to do x-rays? Yes, I'd be delighted to do that. Um, I break x-rays down to basically three different skill categories. Number one is gaining the patient's cooperation. I had a woman in the uh, clinic just the other day, a grown woman, and I needed to take her x-rays, but she was so conditioned to it being an uncomfortable experience and one that she should fight against that uh, she, she balled up her cheeks. Mm, she tightened the muscles in her cheeks. She balled up her tongue. And I mean, it was physically impossible to get the, the sensor back beyond the bicuspids. It, it was, and, it, and so I just kind of looked at her and understood that this woman has had a traumatic experience in the past and she feels like she has to resist. And, and so to, to gain her cooperation, I had to do a few things. One, explain to her, this is where I need to place the sensor. And so I'll take my gloved finger and I'll place my finger on the palate where I need to place the sensor. And then um, I will say, I need you to relax your cheeks and your tongue. And I know this can be uncomfortable, but I'm going to do this really quickly. You just breathe through your nose for a few moments. I'll place it, I'll take the image and we'll move on. Um, so trying to help that woman accept the sensor was is a number one that's our our, our challenge um the other thing that i do with in that situation is i will hand them a hand mirror and i will put the sensor in their hand and i will ask them to place it themselves when a patient has control uh when they when they're given a sense of control what to expect what's expected of them, then they can assist you and, and work with you. So uh, so that worked for her. And, and actually that's a, a tip regarding the gag reflex. Um, there are a variety of tips about the gag reflex. Uh, one tip is, uh, you know, asking the patient to breathe through your nose. Some people say, pull your toes back, you know, pull your feet back and bring your toes up. Um, and another tip is to put salt on the palm of the patient's hand, have them touch their tongue to the salt and then place the sensor. So these are all wonderful tips, but what they are really is a diversion. We're trying to get the patient to not think about this sensor so much, but to think about the salt, to think about their toes, put their mind elsewhere. You know, the best, most effective trick I've learned is to have them hold the hand mirror and look at their own eyes. So I tell the patient, I want you to look into your own eyes while I'm, while I'm placing this. I want you to just stare into your own eyes and there is nothing more diverting 
than ourselves. We love to look at ourselves and it works. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful trick. It's effective. And so that's a, that's a great way to avoid that gag reflex. I think then once we've gained the patient's cooperation, the next thing that's really important is that you understand about projecting. If you would think for a moment about shadows, making shadows, we if you would take like three coffee mugs and line them up on your table, and then you take a notebook or some something that you can imagine would be like an x-ray sensor and you place them behind your coffee mugs and then you take a flashlight and if you imagine that that flashlight is your x-ray beam and you would shine your x your flashlight through the coffee mugs onto that notebook basically what you're doing is you're making a, a an example of a dental x-ray and so what you can do is imagine that you, you're trying to place the sensor back far enough to capture those distal, the distal of the, of the third molar and capture the apices of the roots. So I would encourage your listeners to put those coffee mugs up, put that notebook up in one hand, hold the flashlight in the other, and then move the flashlight to the right and to the left and see what happens to the shadows which are projected onto that notebook. You can cast any number of different images just by playing with shadows. So if you move it to the, um, to the right and you drop it down and project up, you're gonna get one image. If you move it to the middle and you project it, you bring the flashlight close you'll see a different image. If you pull the flashlight back, you'll see another image. And the reason that this is an important concept for people to understand is that, again, back to that patient who, who won't allow you to place the sensor back so you can capture the distal um, of those third molars or even the second molars. So we can place the sensor back as far as we're able but then we can project, we can take those projecting skills, transfer them to the, the task of taking great x-rays, and we can alter the angle from which we're projecting our x-ray beam. And we can capture excellent x-rays that way. And it's, you know, it's difficult to, we don't ever wanna play around with dental x-radiation, but we can play with shadows. We can play with visible light and we can acquire new skills that way, a new skill set that our patients will definitely appreciate. Janet, I don't know where to begin with all these fabulous tips that you've given us. <laughs> um, first of all, I would say most of the time when patients are in defensive mode, they're not even aware. It's just something, oh, this is going to happen and the body knows what to do. Bam. <laughs> so mm -hmm. having a way to just relax the patient mm -hmm. is so important because just telling them to relax, it's neither here nor there because they're not even aware of what they're doing to tense up. So I thought that was a very, very valid point. Um, I too have found that when you give the patient some degree of control, it de-stresses them in a way that you could not imagine. Because what's going on in the head is a story. Okay, what's going to happen if they go too far back? Or what's going to happen if this, that, 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 that? And if you begin to say, hey, this is what you can do if you feel that, or this is what we're going to do. So you change the story in the head, it begins to de-stress them and they're more likely to be in the moment working with you rather than anticipating and <laughs> putting up all the defenses possible just in case you go too far. So those two tips were great, but girl, this thing with the coffee mug and using it to 
practice where to position that cone so that you get a good image. Priceless. <laughs> Man, it, let me I'm glad. Priceless. I have been practicing dentistry for over 33 years. I have never heard somebody give such a practical example as to how you can prepare yourself to improve the quality of the radiographs that we have at the end of the day. Fantastic. Thank you um, so much. I have, I have used distraction methods with the toes lifting your feet and all of that. I've never heard of the salt before. What do you think of, sometimes I just spray a little topical in the mouth and have them swish it around for about a minute or two. And when they empty out, um, they're not as likely to gag if they have a strong gag reflex as mm -hmm. they would had I not sprayed. What do you think about that? You know, to be honest, I've never used that trick. I have not tried that. So I have, I, maybe I will. I'll do that next week. Oh, <laughs> try guess that. what? Now I feel that we're tick for talk. I've given yes. you <laughs> and yeah. you've given me. <laughs> you know, and that's, and I think um, back to both you and my, our guiding mission is that we can always learn. Like I'm always receptive to trying new things. You, you just gave me something I'm going to go and try. And, and uh, if we can carry that yearning for learning, that uh, zest for being our best. Wow, I just, I really didn't mean to do with that, those two rhyming things, but it <laughs> actually does work. <laughs> uh, if, we can, in, if we can carry that through our career, what an inspiration we will be to those around us you know, in, in your when we're, when a person's in learning mode, we're not threatening, right? We don't we don't make other people feel less than. We build each other up. That's a, that's the chemistry of a great dental team. To um, you know, there was a a woman who who wrote. She was just asking for help on online, and she she wrote a post, and I I meant to have it here to read to you, but the gist of it was that. She was new to this dental office. Her coworkers gave her all the FMXs. She had to take all the FMXs. Her patients get gagged. She said out of five patients, at least three of them gag every time. And that her coworkers, she had to go get help. Her coworkers would give her strange looks. And she said, please help me. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my job. And her last sentence was, please, no bashing. And I'll tell you what, that fills me with a great deal of empathy and a little bit of anger because there's way too much bashing that goes in to the, at the dental office. It goes on and it's not right. Uh, I, if we can just help each other, if we can get over the bullying and the one upmanship and the this idea that just because you can physically take an x-ray better than somebody else makes you, what, a better dental assistant? No, it's the ability to be a teammate, to bring the whole team up. And, and if you know a trick, share it. If you need some help, boy, to have the freedom to ask. And, and I know that for you and I both, we're presenting our material because we're a safe place to ask. I want anyone to be able to come to me with a question, even if they feel like it's like, oh, I know I should know this, but I don't. And, oh, gosh, please just ask. You know, and there's another um, example of that type of what I consider bullying. Um, a man reached out to me online and he said that he's struggling with understanding how to mount bite wings. So he was in a program. And they were given four films and he had to mount the bite, bite wings in, in order. And um, he was having trouble with it. And he said he, he was going to possibly be kicked out of the program because he didn't know how to mount bite wings. And, and granted, mounting bite wings, you and I both know, is pretty fundamental, pretty elementary. But my thought was, if your teacher doesn't know how to teach somebody how to mount dental bite wings 
it's not you that should be kicked out of the program. It's the teacher. And, you know, just this, like I say, just the arrogance just makes me so mad. <laughs> man, just get off your high horse and teach the man. He's trying to do his best. Well, so that's my that's my rant of the morning. You just heard my ranting. Sorry. <laughs> no. So I agree 100 percent. As we come to end of this podcast, I want to share the fact that teamwork makes the dream work. Whenever somebody compliments me, it's not about Dr. Lost Marriage. It's about the team. And I say, thank you. I always say, however, it's because of this great team that I have. And I think that um, we can make a difference in rephrasing reshaping how we view and treat each other um teamwork makes the dream work so learning about different personalities and how people operate in the same space is important learning how to communicate so that message sent is message received that's all important but most importantly caring caring about your co-workers your team members because remember the dentist doesn't pay salaries it's the people who choose to come and get the care who will cover us and so if we are working cohesively as a team and people feel warm and welcome and feel that this team is just working together everybody benefits it's a win-win so janet i I always end our, my conversations with a quote. And my quote today is, the simple act of caring is heroic. <laughs> the simple act of caring is heroic. And I credit Edward Albert for this quote. As we come to the end and we focus on those words, can you remind us again where we can contact with contact you if we have a desire to take one of your courses or to get further information about um, just sharpening our swords as it relates to dental radiographs and that absolutely yes so my website is www.dentalxraycoach.com and if you would like to email me you can email me at janet at dentalxraycoach.com Dot com. This so, and thank you so much for this opportunity to co- have a conversation with you. You're a lovely person, and I'm. It's an honor to to meet you and get to know you a little bit better. This has been a fantastic interaction, but I hope it won't be the last. I hope you'll come back and share with us at some time in the future. And um, it was a blessing for me, and I'm sure. It was a blessing for all our listeners today. Janet, have a wonderful day. God bless. God bless you too. Thank you. That was such a fabulous session with Janet Simpson. Oh my goodness. You know, Dental procedures are not always comfortable, but if we can learn little tricks to get our patients over the hump, to distract them just enough to do what we need to do and keep them comfortable, it's gold. And I think we got some serious treasures today from Janet. I'm gonna encourage you, listen to this podcast again and again Use your flashlight and your coffee mug to practice positioning x-rays and the beam without the radiation risk and perfect your skill because the better you are at something, the better you feel, the more confident you are and the more trustworthy you are to your team members. So this is a win-win-win. Listen, it's been great as usual. Janet gave you her contact information. You can check her on her website. You can look for her courses. Obviously, this little taste has allowed you to realize that she has a wealth of knowledge. It is obvious that we 
are definitely better together. Listen, encourage someone to subscribe to this podcast. Share it. Like it. Leave a comment because that's the only way we're going to be able to help so many, many, many more people because we're better together. Blessings.